Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So let's talk about Schminka and or Schmink and this beautiful new retro color they just got in. So this is from a special limited edition reissued collection as part of the Schmink retro watercolor. And um, it's kind of like being brought back, right? Excellent quality pigments is what you can uh, always count on from Schmink with high levels of light fast. I don't really know if there are any um, colors that they offer that aren't light fast and that's why I tend to collect them all. So of course I had to bring this one in for my subscribers. If you are a member of my monthly watercolor subscription, then as a surprise to you, I brought in this for my duo collectors and you guys are going to get a sample of it to try it. So I'm really excited to be able to bring this as part of our February issue. So those will be going out uh, January 18th and we're going to try it now and pour some of it. So this is the February color range that I've got going on and it was kind of inspired by this retro uh, color that came out that I did not have and I have not heard of before. I'm really excited. Now there are also other things that I will leave links for from this collection if you want to get a travel tin. There are some really beautiful colors that they have and um, this one, uh, Conil I think it is, called. Cochineal, Koch I think, has been specially reissued, like I said, as part of a retro collection, but the range itself in that special edition is really inspired by original packaging and design that they had from 1912. I love the design. I think it is so pretty. And of course, we have to like save the box, right? I, I don't even like to hoard things except for watercolor, but I definitely am going to keep one of these because I just love it. I think it's beautiful. And I'm also thinking about getting a travel tin because I really don't have one of their travel tins actually by Schmink. So I'm thinking maybe I will do it. Now, some of you asked me about the German pronunciation of Schmink. So Schmink is the German way, I believe, but some people say Schminka or schmink e but i believe it's a silent e is the way it's supposed to be i think in order to achieve high standards though with schmink they have all of these beautiful beautiful colors done in a very special way with the finest raw materials i actually patent my own watercolors my handmade honey watercolors from their wonderful use of gum arabic and um, I actually use their binder as well as uh, clove oil, local honey from here in Canada, and various other things depending on the watercolor that I'm actually working with. So in mine, you will always get this kind of beautiful quality. So right out of the, the tube, it should be like this. So if you are seeing any of the gum Arabic separating um, it should be kind of like a blood red. It's really beautiful. If some, for some reason, your watercolor tube has been sitting for too long, you would want to take, which I don't think it would because this is just reissued, but you would want to stir it, stick a toothpick in, and then just stir it in there for a couple of minutes to reactivate the um, binder, the gum Arabic, because the gum Arabic is actually uh, this lovely color. And that is what you guys typically see oozing out of your tubes when they have sat for too long. It does separate. And in certain watercolors, especially like cobalts, uh, PG-50, they will separate it just in general. You know, it doesn't even take that long. That's why I always say if you're going to invest in watercolor, don't invest in tubes that you're not absolutely excited to get because what happens is if they sit too long and you aren't pouring them, you, they are going to separate. And you won't really get the best tube watercolor. Um, on my website at Jack's Watercolor, I actually pour from tubes everything so that you can get sample pans of all of these beautiful watercolors. And from uh, the monthly subscription, I always end up with a few extra. So if you want to get a larger size than what's in the watercolor subscription, typically around that time, I would go to the website 
and get what I have in stock before I move on to another one. But they do eventually recycle and I tend to get a lot of schminka in there or schmink. Um, shall we test it out now that you've seen how beautiful this pours? It's actually, I don't know, it looks a lot more red uh, than it does on the screen perhaps. Can you see how red it is? Isn't that just luscious? Is it like the most gorgeous color? If I get it really close to my light, there you go. See how red it is? It's really a beautiful, beautiful red. So this is such a great time to have it too, right? Christmas and New Year's. Okay, so pours like a dream. It's luscious. This is a very smooth color. Um, on here, strangely enough, it actually has only two stars as the light fast rating, which is one of the least amount of stars I would have to say that I have in comparison to, let's see. So like Glacier Turquoise has four stars and this has two stars, right? And um, yeah, so interesting that this is one of the, I guess it's just a special watercolor, one of the least light fast of their collection, yet it's such a crazy color to get. But you know, reds, I would have to say that most reds are less light fast, typically within the lines. If I were going to look through the transparent reds across a lot of different watercolors, I would have to say that reds can sometimes be the least light fast. So I have a new swatch book for those of you who purchased my swatch book um, this past year. You got one of my um, what is it? Fabriano paper swatch books. And they look like this inside. They are all beautiful, hundred percent, 300 grams of watercolor paper, 140 pound, two sided. You can paint on two sided. Um, the new, there's three new covers. So you probably got the heavyweight cardstock cover in metallic last time. Right now on the website on Jack's watercolor, there is this leather cover and then there are two vegan leather covers um, one in pastel pink and one in baby blue and I don't think I have them here as samples but because I'm using this one but this is now um, my newest one that I haven't started with yet so let me get a clip just grab one of these clips here and just clip it open, make some space. So are we excited to see what this looks like? I am. I'm so excited. I haven't tried it. I saved it for you guys. Um, let me pour some in. I'm going to make a full pan for my collection here. Yeah, I'm still kind of surprised that it's... Uh, lower on the light fast rating but again it is a red and it's a transparent red so let's see okay so there are a couple of surprises coming to you guys in the uh, february subscription which is leaving my studio and the fulfillment center on uh, January 18th and being shipped all over the world. So depending on where you are, this is interesting. When I add a little bit of water to it, it kind of like brings out like a strawberry. Can you see that? See the strawberry? It's like this strawberry red. Do you want me to tell you what it's made out of? Because you might get like weirded out about what these things are actually made of. But this particular watercolor um, with the pigment index NR41. And the reason why it's not the typical pigment index is because it's actually made from insect carcasses. <laughs> now you're going to be like, oh my God, <laughs> what are we painting with? All right. So first I'm going to do my standard, let's paint a crazy big red circle. Oh my God, this is way more pigmented. It's so bright. Wow. 
This is like a gorgeous red. Oh my god. Guys, I don't know. It's like a velvety red. It's beautiful. Boy, I'd love to see them making this. I would love to know the process in making this. I mean, I assume there's a grinding down to get pigment powder. Um, but wow, that's stunning. I'm even really interested to see if it oxidizes to a different color. You know? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Goodness. I have to say, this is a gorgeous color. Okay, so let's add a little bit of salt to some of it. Just to see what it does. Kind of gave it a lot of salt, but that's just regular table salt. Here it is. So it is a very, very pink strawberry color. And then, interesting. So I would have to say that the, the color that I just made, I just made a color, um, cherry blossom color, that is a PV19 with uh, granulation. So it's really, really close as far as like, it's very, very close. If I were to paint in a mass tone, um, other than it, mine's heavily granulating, so it does have these undertones of kind of like a potter's pink undertone, it's really close. Is this close to my carmine? I don't really know. I don't think so. Let me see. Mm, carmine's just a bit lighter. This is a bit more fluorescent. You know, it's funny because fluorescents are usually not as light fast or they're not light fast, right? And I almost am looking at this seeing a very big fluorescent tone in there. You know what I mean? Can you see the fluorescence? I can. It's really, really wild. All right, well, let's look at it um, mixed with something else, shall we? So I have this uh, new color, this blue that is going into our subscriptions. So let me pick up a little bit here. So this is also going um, into the subscriptions in February. And we're just going to mix a little bit of the sky color. So this is a granulating sky. So it's a cobalt sky is what I called it. It's a beautiful granulating PG50 with a bright teal kind of undertone. And it's got a cerulean feel to it as well with that lovely luscious uh, granulation. So we got that. I'm going to tap in here and just get a little bit of this. Let's watch and see how it travels and reacts. So it doesn't look like it's got any ox gall or a heavy amount of ox gall because it's really not pushing the other watercolor out of the way. But I think if we get a little heavier with our mix here, I think we will really enjoy what we find. So let's get a little bit more of this blue. That's really pretty. Now it makes some really nice wine colors. I figured it would because it's got that pink. You know what this would mix lovely with is um, like you could mix this with ultramarine and get a really beautiful shade. Why don't we try that as well? Look how beautiful and rich that is. So let's just strike a little bit more here so we have some mixing space look at how dark oh my gosh it's like so blood red what a beautiful color did I say that already I think I did I'm experiencing this for the first time with you guys <laughs> okay let me get my palette out here my big old granulating palette and um I'll show you what I'm doing. So this is this is my granulating palette. It's my workable palette. I just keep samples of pretty much everything I work with um, on two levels on this palette. And 
that is how I come up with a lot of different colors or just play with my own artwork. Okay, so let's get some French Ultra. So I got a, this is a Schmincke French Ultra. Yeah, so this is going to make some beautiful, like if you have mostly the red and less of the French Ultra, then you're going to get a gorgeous, like start to get the, the depth of the wine color, right? And then if you add more French Ultra, you're going to get purple beautiful beautiful purple really pretty so this would be rather dramatic if you had to paint really dramatic sunsets or skies or you had something that you needed those deep rich wines and purples but remember also uh, with this kind of thing if you start to add granulation to it you can add a lot of water to it and literally um, come out with these gorgeous light mixes, you know, because you can feed it some granulating color. Like a lot of the watercolor I send you is granulating. So that's a good way to kind of like infuse a lot of these beautiful colors with some granulation. Let's look for um, what else can we mix with this? So that would be the first blue I would always mix because that of course is going to give me some really gorgeous uh, wine colors and purples. But let's see how it reacts with yellow shall we so i have granulating yellow but then i'm wondering if i should just get a little bit of sunshine yellow which is from my own watercolor sunshine yellow is one of my most popular colors um, in my honey made watercolor collection so it's a beautiful, beautiful, rich yellow that's really bright in the light um, if you mix it with a lot of water. But it also makes the most brilliant and beautiful green shades. Now here it's making a very rich, bright orange. What a lovely color. Look at that. It actually makes a color that um, this is really close to Aussie red. I think it's Aussie red gold by Daniel Smith. So if you mix sunshine with this color, you basically get a better version, I think, of Aussie red gold. That's really pretty. I mean, just here, I could literally do shades all over here and just go crazy. We could get an hour's worth of shades and pastel versions of all of these. Um, if I take a little bit of this and mix mostly the yellow with it, so this is like half and half, and this is just a touch, then you get a really, really nice kind of like a, a golden yellow almost, you know, really pretty like golden yellow. It's a really beautiful color. Okay, that's so wet. So let's just take some of that water out so it doesn't make a mess. See how pretty that is. I'm going to peel back some of this as well so you can see it. And look at that granulation that happened from the, um, that one is French Ultramarine from Schmincke. Schmink. This is, I actually sell the samples of that on my website if you want to try it and you don't feel like investing in a whole tube. But honestly, I can give you a link. Um, if you haven't shopped through my links before, you would save an extra 10%. If you're one of my subscribers and you get it through my website, you'd save 20%. So there's lots of ways of getting it. Okay, let me give you a beautiful view of what we have here. So see how pink it is? See how red? It's like almost fluorescent pink in some cases, but then in mouse tone, it's like this really beautiful wine color. I think that's gorgeous, right? And then mixed with the French Ultra, you have lovely wine to like purples. And then if you add water, it dissipates, of course, but you can probably get 
an actual purple. And then I got this from there, which was more of a really light version of it. And then I mixed it with my sunshine yellow, which is a warm yellow, like a sun bright yellow. And with mostly yellow, it gives you this really beautiful warm orange with lots of red. It gives you a bright, bright, vivid orange. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's almost the color that I made for the watercolor subscriptions. It's a bit brighter. I think this one's, it's close, but it's not, well, it is, it's actually really close <laughs> to say it's really close. Wow. It's really close. So you can tell that that is a color that I would use often. You can see how fluorescent it is when the light changes. Let's see if it will just, um, readjust. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay. I'm going to take some of the light off so we can see how that changes and differs just from the regular lights in the room. Very pretty. And you can see the salt effects too. The salt effects are great for skies or for little, um, like dust blowing through the wind, you know, like how some flowers blow off. It would also be good for snow flurries. So you could literally like use salt to define a tree. It'd be kind of fun. It's beautiful. Okay. So what do you think? Is it something that you really want to receive in the subscription? If it is, let me know you want to, you want this color and I will make sure that you get it in the monthly subscription for February, but leave me a message on this video and let me hear what you think of the color. And if you are really excited to get this one in our watercolor subscription for the month, happy painting everyone and blessings to you all.